You might wonder what's special about a table because you already have data in rows and columns. Well, tables save you time. When Excel recognizes a table, it can do things automatically that would otherwise take you a number of steps to do. For example, in a table, you can sort and filter, you get special table formatting, and Excel fills in formulas for you. You'll see all this as we go through the course. I'll convert this data into an Excel table by clicking inside the data. Then, on the ribbon, I'll click the Insert tab, and then in the Tables group, I'll click Table. Now, see this box, where is the data for your table? Excel has automatically selected my data and entered the cell references to be included for the table. And see this checkbox, My Table Has Headers? I want the checkbox selected so that Excel uses the column headings as headers in my new table. If I didn't select the checkbox, Excel would insert its own column headings, column 1, column 2, and so on, which I could rename later on. I'll click OK, and now I have an Excel table. Notice the formatting. Excel formatted the data as a table, makes it stand out from any other information that might be in the spreadsheet. The column headings appear in bold white letters on a dark background. Each column heading includes a drop-down arrow that you can use to sort and filter data. And each row has a shaded background alternating between blue and gray. You can always select a different format if you like. When I click in the table, I see these Table Tools Design tab for the table. And what I can do, if I'm not sure that I like this style, is go over to the Table Styles group, click the arrow here. As I pass my insertion point over these different styles, if you take a look at the table, you'll see that you get a live preview of what the style would look like in the table. Well, right now, I think the existing style is fine, so I'll leave it as it is. Right, I'll type Commission. Press Enter, and there's my new table, column, and notice that the formatting was applied for me. To add a new row at the bottom of the table, I just go to the underneath the last row and type Press Enter, and there's my new row, appropriately formatted. It's also easy to add columns and rows inside the table. Say that I want a new column. I just click a cell immediately to the right of where I want to insert a new column. Right click, point to insert, and then click Table Columns to the left. And there's my new column. Now if I wanted a new row right here, all I do is right click, point to insert, and click Table Rows above, and there's my new row. As you've seen, when you create a table, Excel automatically adds these drop-down arrows to the top of each column. By the way, since the last video, I added some blank columns to the left here so that a menu that's going to show up in a few seconds will be on screen and not off to the left. Now, I can use these arrows to sort items either alphabetically or numerically depending on the information in the columns, and I can pick any column to sort on. For example, say that I want to sort the country column so that all countries are listed alphabetically. I'll click the drop-down button arrow, and I'll click Sort A to Z. Now, Canada is listed first, and down near the bottom is USA. Notice this little arrow here, upwards pointing arrow. That tells you that this column is sorted and all the other table columns are sorted accordingly based on the first column sort. But maybe after I sort the first column I decide to sort on a different basis by salesperson name. So I click the arrow on the salesperson column and select sort A to Z. Now my salespeople are sorted alphabetically Buchanan, Callahan, and the small arrow that indicates I've sorted is moved to this column because I can only sort on one column at a time. Now, if I decide to sort a column with numbers, such as this order ID column, 
my option is to sort smallest to largest or largest to smallest. And I think I'll sort largest to smallest. And notice now that my sort arrow is moved to this column and the other columns are sorted according to the sort order of this column date column. This spreadsheet has dates for 2009, 10, and 11. But suppose I only want to see the information for 2010. I'll click the arrow and then I'll clear this select all checkbox and then I'm going to select 2010 and then I'll click OK. And now I just see the order dates for 2010 and this little icon here, it's a filter icon, tells you that this is a filtered column. Now there's still more filtering that I can do with dates. I'll click the drop down arrow on order date again, then I'll point to date filters and I'll click equals because I'd like to see all the order dates that fall on 9-22-2010 and I'll click OK and I see there were two orders on 922 by Fuller and by King. Now get rid of this filter by selecting clear filter from order date and the filter icon is gone. Now you can also use text to filter by. I'll change to this spreadsheet Northwind by clicking the Northwind tab at the bottom of the sheet and this is a list of all the products for Northwind traders. Well I'd like to see what products have the name have the word mix in them so I'm going to click the drop down arrow point to text filters and then I'm going to click contains and in the contains box I'm going to type mix and I'll click OK and I see that three Northwind Traders products contain the word mix chocolate biscuits brownie and cake mixes now I'll clear the filter by clicking the arrow clear filter from product name and all my data is visible again. In the practice at the end of the course you'll have a chance to filter and sort and note that you can filter more than one column at a time. The table has three duplicates that I can see Antonio Alwyn, Thomas Binder and Pat Coleman. Now it's easy enough for me to see this in the short list but imagine if it was hundreds or thousands of rows long it'd be pretty hard to proofread. I can use Excel to remove the duplicates for me. I'll click in the table and then we get the design tab and we've got this remove duplicates command but before I start I want to warn you that you should be careful with this feature because Excel doesn't hide the duplicate information it literally removes it from your spreadsheet. I'll go ahead and click the command and we've got remove duplicates dialog box here and in it are the two columns that are available in this spreadsheet, first na last name and first name. And I want both of those checked because I want Excel to check both columns when it's making its determination of any duplicates. So I'll click OK. And Excel tells me that three duplicate values were found and removed and nine unique values remain. And I'll click OK. And so those duplicates are gone. They're not hidden. Another thing about tables is that tables can help you to work with numbers. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of my table here and this column, the order amount column, I want to get the sum of the, all of these order amounts. If I click in the table, I get, I get the table tools design tab and here in table style options it says total row. So I'll select that box and now I've got this new row. Now I'm going to click where I want my sum and I get this arrow that appears and when I click the arrow it shows me all the different functions that I could use right now. Average, count, max, min and I want to sum up the numbers in the order amount column. So I'll click that and bingo I've got my sum. Now one thing I'd like you to notice though is Excel took care of that for me but if I click in the cell with the formula and then draw your eye up here to the formula bar you'll notice that although I picked the sum function it says subtotal and 109 by the way is the argument for sum when you're using the subtotal function. Well Excel did this because subtotal is the only function that can deal with filtered columns and I'll show you what I mean. 
Say that instead of having this order amounts for all the salespeople, I just want to see what uh, Buchanan sold. So clear, select all, then I'll click Buchanan, and I'll click OK. And as you see, the order amount updated to only show Buchanan. By using the subtotal function, Excel can correctly calculate when rows are hidden. Now Excel takes care of all this for you. Say for example that I want to change sum to average. I just click and then I've got the average for Buchanan sales. And if I look up here at subtotal and 101 is the argument for average. But this is nothing that you have to worry about. It's just automatic. Um, say I take this filter off and then I select select all and you can see the average change slightly to reflect all the different sales and I'll click again and I'll get a sum and that's all there is to it. I just wanted you to know about the subtotal function so that you would uh, not wonder what on earth was going on if you happen to notice it in the formula bar that if you create a formula at the top of a column, Excel will copy that formula down the column for you and just fill it in automatically. I'm going to add another column here. I'll call it COMM for commission. Press enter. I've got my new column. And what I want to do is type a formula that will give a 3% commission for each one of these order amounts. Now I could type the formula by using the cell reference, for example, C2 times 0.03. But instead, I'm going to use a built-in feature of tables. I'll type an equal sign, followed by a square bracket. As soon as I type that square bracket, Excel offers me a name of every column that's in the spreadsheet. I want order amount, so I'll double-click that. I'll close that with a square bracket and then I'm going to go times 0.03 and now watch the column as I press enter. I'll press enter and the entire column is filled with what that commission will be for that particular sale. Using the column names with the formula makes it much easier to read.